My name is Dominic Jackson Call. I work as the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Learning Advisor at SOAS University of London. I'm based in HR, uh, but I work uh, on issues of equality and diversity. And sometimes my role is based in different universities, based in either HR or in equality and diversity or in staff development. I'm in HR and staff development. Um, and my role is to basically train uh, staff, academic and non-academic staff, uh, around issues of equality and diversity. So things like the equality law, things like uh, unconscious bias, uh, uh, harassment and so on. And uh, as well, I work on, uh, I work with academics specifically on making their teaching more inclusive. I've always worked in higher education. Um, I didn't know I would work in higher education to start with. Um, I did my undergraduate degree in geography, thinking I would be a geography teacher, but then I thought, no, I don't want to be a teacher. It's a bit too bureaucratic. So I'm going to go into something more um, suited for me. And uh, I started with widening participation. So encouraging people from all backgrounds to go to university. So that's how I ended up in higher education. Um, and uh, I've always had an interest in training. I did an internship at the European Commission in the staff development unit and the HR um, admin, uh, DG, which is Director General in, uh, in, equal, in European Union uh, Commission. And, um, and from widening participation, I noticed that I wanted to work not just on getting students into university, but also on what's happening uh, within university. And then I realized that that requires me on concentrating not on students, but on the staff. So that's how that led me to equality and diversity and that, that set in HR. So I'm a bit different from your ops, from your recruitment people. Um, but we are all connected because we need to work together to make sure that our staff are developed to bring the best service to students and other staff members. I'd love to believe that I have some kind of impact on people. Um, the whole idea of training people in equality and diversity is to uh, to improve this world, to equalize opportunities between different groups of people and to foster good relations. So I definitely feel that working in higher education uh, allows me to do that. Um, what, I'd what I really lo love about higher education is that, to me, it raises the next generation of, of, uh, of people who will be making this country a better, uh, better place and the world a better place because SOAS is such an international university. Um, so yeah, it definitely makes me feel that I have some small input into, into people's lives. And then, you know, just through actually direct contact with people, I, I get a lot of feedback, positive feedback saying like, oh, you've really made me think about things like, like, uh, that I've never thought about. You really made me, um, question my assumptions. So, and that's good because, you know, change happens through for questioning ourselves so so yeah i definitely feel that i have some kind of impact and it's definitely important for me i haven't worked in a professional role in private sector i worked during my undergraduate studies i worked uh in the hotel industry so that's something completely different so i can't really com uh, compare um what I know from my friends, they have a lot more perks, be it financial or better coffee in the office or, or stuff like that. But, you know, we, we do, we do, I think that in higher education, we care about each other. So we may not have a lot of money to spend on our staff as people would be paid in, high, in the private sector. But we, we care for each other, for one another. And um, sure, I get, I get massages every now and then. Uh, as part of well-being, there's a well-being uh, week or well-being fortnight this year we we had at SOAS, which was just full of really nice uh, events trying to to make us feel better at work. So so there's there's perks, there's life uh, work-life balance. Um, 
maybe academics have it a bit harder when it comes to work-life balance, but I leave work uh, at four. I come in early. I, I leave work at four and I don't think too much about work afterwards. And I know that in, in the private sector, uh, people complain about re working really long hours. And that's not the case for me. I've, I've got, I really enjoy my work-life balance. Um, SOAS is part of University of London, and therefore we have a whole network uh, of facilities that we can access. So we've got discounted gym uh, membership, if we want. There's obviously uh, cafes all around our location with discounts because of uh, being at SOAS, or even within the buildings themselves, we have cafes which are quite cheap. Um, for me, the biggest perk is a bit geeky because um, as a staff member, even though I'm not, not, a, uh, not a employed on an academic uh, um, contract, I have access to all the knowledge. I have access to the library. I have access to all the uh, journals, e-journals, and so on. So I always have access to, to knowledge, and I can learn and continue learning, and that's amazing. Um, and I guess one of back to, to thinking about the perks is um, being sent to a lot of conferences and having the freedom to decide what conference I want and my manager is really understanding that my role, the, the better I can do my role is, is um, my, my manager's understanding that it really takes a lot of my own learning to then improve how I, uh, how I perform my role. So, uh, so the freedom to go to conferences, to seminars, um, and that's really encouraged, uh, so that's a big perk uh, as well. Some of the opportunities, uh, last year I was sent on the Erasmus uh, training week, which was just an amazing week um, in Portugal, so that was great, uh, all paid for by the European Union Erasmus scheme. Hopefully we will still participate in this. Um, and that allowed me to network with people around, around Europe and realize, uh, compare ourselves, how we approach things uh, in HR with other people uh, around the country, around the continent, um, and see where we're lacking, see where we're actually good at, and start some cooperation. So that was a, a brilliant thing. Um, another amazing thing is the kind of flexibility of, uh, of work. So. Um, you don't have to work full time always. So I was actually studying and working. So for a long time I was working part time because I was doing my PhD and that really fit, fit it nicely. And my PhD was really connected to uh, my work. So, so it was a mutual benefit for, for both my employer and my PhD because I was learning about things and applying those things and then applying those things and learning from that and so on, so on, so on. So that was, that was pretty amazing. I think the biggest highlight of my career is the fact that I was able to shape shape my own post. So when I started working at SOAS, I started working just as a kind of general equality and diversity um, officer advisor. But before, because people noticed that my strength was in training, uh, they allowed me to kind of morph my role into training. So now basically, the job that I am in is kind of created for me. Um, so I think that, 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 that's, that's, that's great. Um, and the things that we're doing really at, at SOAS right now are, are really impactful. We're really trying to, uh, to improve how uh, we do a lot of things, how we, um, how we teach, how we assess students. Uh, so that we can uh, we can uh, make sure that we're giving everyone uh, the same opportunities for success, and that's very impactful. And for me, that's a highlight. Um, in my previous role, I worked at Kingston University, and I worked on closing the racialized awarding gap over there. And we were, I mean, Kingston still is at the forefront of that work. So working in a team which is in, uh, nationally recognized as being leader in a field. Was a, was a big highlight for me. So that, that was a great experience. It's difficult to give a tip on how to uh, shape your career uh, because 
when I talk to my colleagues in HR, not all of them have HR uh, qualifications, HR degrees, and so on, because uh, there's such a variety of skills that is used in HR that you can actually come from almost any background. So um, I guess, uh, depending on the role within HR, uh, you have to be passionate about people. Um, if you're passionate about spreadsheets, that's also good be uh, because you know that's also needed. Um, but don't, I would say don't let the kind of image of HR as just people who are processing payroll uh, stop you from applying there because it's a much more varied uh, department with a lot of roles and a lot of skills needed. Like I am in HR, but I don't know anything about payroll, to be honest. Um, uh, and a lot of people on payroll don't know a lot about equality and diversity, so we kind of uh, um, complement each other. So don't let that, that kind of image uh, of HR as, uh, as the people who are bad and, uh, and uh, you know, very admin focused scare you because that's not uh, exactly how it is. There are bits of, of uh, admin, but there's also a lot of uh, fascinating roles.